everyone. Today we are specifically talking about phlebotomy tubes and order of draw. Okay, so the first thing that you want to know is this is the appropriate order of draw. <laughs> okay, the uh, blood culture bottles do not have to be aerobic and then anaerobic, but um, they're just there to show you uh, what's going on with them. Then it's the light blue, red, uh, this is considered basically an SST tube as well. The SST, which is the gold, the uh, lithium heparin, the potassium EDTA. These are two tubes. This is, this is actually a bullet. Um, you can see there's a smaller tube inside a really large one. And then uh, there's the gray top tube. So now we're going to talk about what's in them. What do they do? Um, so when you're going to draw a specimen uh, from a patient and they do require a, um, a blood culture bottle, uh, it's because they are thought to have septicemia, which is an active growing of uh, bacteria in the patient's blood. And it is very deadly in a very serious condition. So um, we draw the blood culture bottles to actually try to grow them. And then we plate them and perform a gram stain on them if they're positive. Uh, and that way we can get a purified culture and figure out what the patient is actually suffering from and the best way to treat them. So when we do uh, draw these, we want to use an alcohol prep to cleanse the site in which we're going to stick the needle from on the receiving end of the vacuum container. So there was there was a cap like this on this one, uh, but I took it off here. So here we would use an alcohol prep and let it air dry. Do not blow on it, don't wave at it. You don't want any environmental bacteria to get on there and then uh, of course, we would put the vacuum tamer needle in there and start the draw. Okay, so if that was the um, required one, we would then follow it up with all of these if they're required. You definitely would have a lithium heparin because you think of a lactate um, being necessary. Okay, so what is actually in these and how do they work? Uh, so there is a anticoagulant in here that pulls out calcium and is going to reduce complement from acting and being initiated in the patient's blood because complement does destroy uh, bacteria. So we don't want them to die. We want them to actually grow. Um, and it also slows down the phagocytosis and reduces any antibiotic therapy that they might already be on when um, they have been drawn. Okay, so if you'll notice here at the bottom, there's this disc. Okay, when these bottles go into an incubator, it's a special incubator for the bottles, and there is a light that shines through this disc um, every specified number of seconds or minutes or whatever it is that the manufacturer um, uses, and it's going to detect any changes in um, this color. There are also other uh, blood culture systems that uh, would detect to see if there is any cloudiness in the um, cloudiness in the bottle. I did actually put blood in this a long time ago. Uh, I keep this as a um, actually I think I put it in both of them. I keep these as uh, purely demonstrational type of things, but to see if there's any cloudiness or clotting or anything in here, which would indicate the possibility of uh, bacterial growth. All right, now moving on to the blue tops. We talked about this in a coagulation video, but uh, we'll talk about it again. So the, uh, these are the same uh, type of tube. They're a um, sodium citrate tube, as you can see there. They require a nine to one uh, ratio of plasma to anticoagulant. You can see the anticoagulant in there. And this anticoagulant pulls out uh, calcium as well. Uh, so that the clotting cascade factors are preserved. And um, calcium happens to actually be one of the clotting cascade factors. And when it's pulled out, that eliminates the ability for the clotting cascade to happen. And therefore, when you go to perform testing, you would add reagents that have calcium in them. So that way you get it to clot and you can um, 
detect any deficiencies or qualitative um, issues with the patient's uh, factors or, oh, excuse me, or platelets uh, using those tests. This is a serum tube. It is a non-additive tube and, uh, or it could be a clot activator. And this is used for routine chemistries. Um, the clot activator has silica in it and uh, enhances coagulation. So we go from a wanting to stop coagulation to wanting it to happen, okay? Because what we want is we want serum, and serum is the liquid portion of the blood after the blood has clotted. So this one we would spin down, I forgot to mention that too, um, the blue tops we would spin down as well and use the plasma uh, from here. Uh, this will, we would spin down and use the serum from up here and use it for chemistry. So the, um, the, the gel separator that might be in this one, you can see it in these two. Honestly, uh, these are all used for the same thing. Um, so see there's gel in these. This is called a serum separator tube, SST, as you see at the top here. Um, this is also an SST. T serum separator tube and what we're doing here is we're using this um, this gel to separate uh, the cells at the bottom from the liquid portion at the top they don't always clot uh, you may have a clot within the liquid portion and I do have a video on uh, just uh, squeezing that clot out because um, the chemistries that you're looking for aren't really going to be affected if you squeeze the entire thing out. If you don't squeeze all of the liquid out of the clot, it will get affected. Um, you may have, obviously, calcium be an issue if it's been clotted, but other than that, everything should be fine. Okay, so that's what this is about. Uh, again, serum is the liquid portion of the blood after a clot, so we do want it to be clotted. Okay, and um, therefore, uh, calcium is not going to be an issue. I know I just said that, sorry. Um, calcium is not going to be an issue because you wanted it to clot anyway, so no big deal. Okay, so we're looking for our, our chemistries like the CMP, the complete metabolic panel, or the uh, basic metabolic panel. Okay, moving on to this one. This one is your lithium heparin tube. Okay, and uh, this can be used for all different kinds of testing, uh, chemistry-wise. Uh, the sodium or lithium heparin, um, most likely it's lithium. Sodium isn't really used too much anymore. Um, but it's used for uh, stat uh, chemistries. You would spin this one down too. You might have stat labs or point-of-care labs that use this. Um, it can be used on a blood gas analyzer to establish chemistries. It could also be used for a lactate. If this was for a lactate, it would be um, it would be brought down to the lab on ice. It needs to be on ice or else it is inaccurate and you cannot use it. You would use this for ammonia levels and all sorts of things, okay? So if this is used for um, chemistries, uh, depending on what it is, like if it's a, a heart panel, you would spin it down. But if it's a whole blood chemistry, then you wouldn't spin it down. Um, moving on to the next one. Okay. These are both, um, unfortunately, this doesn't have a really nice label on the side, um, but these are both the potassium EDTA. Now, EDTA uh, is a big deal <laughs> For a few different reasons. These guys are used for blood banking. They're used for hematology, so uh, CBC in hematology. They can be used in coagulation for the factor V Leiden. Um, they can, they're used in blood banking for um, all the testing that we do in blood banking. But they can also be a problem if they're outside <laughs> of their correct draw. Okay, so notice here that it says it's potassium EDTA. There's possibly um, the, there is a possibility you might have sodium EDTA. It's not used as frequently as potassium. Most places use potassium EDTA, but that becomes an issue 
think about this. If you drew these specimens out of order and you had drawn a potassium EDTA in front of your chemistries, what do you think would happen? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to put potassium into these tubes, and we know that um, the EDTA pulls out calcium. Okay, so on your chemistry results, you're going to end up with a high, a very high or a critical or unmeasurable potassium and a very critically low or unmeasurable calcium. You might end up putting this specimen on for like two times and it never ends up reading the potassium or the calcium. That is a big indication that the purple top was drawn in front of the chemistries, okay? And that's a big problem and we want to make sure that you know um, how to spot that. It is the most common problem, honestly, the order of draw. Um, ends up affecting your um, your chemistries and please don't ever report out those criticals because then you're going to cause the patient to be treated improperly and that could really affect their health care and um, affect you as well in regard to uh, your your experience and um, the possibility of you losing your job depending on uh, the outcome of that patient. So please, please, please make sure that you remember that a critically high potassium and a critically low uh, calcium would indicate EDTA contamination and you should not report any of those results. You don't need to tell any other uh, area of the lab really about that if it is an issue unless there was another gold top drawn somewhere, okay? So with the potassium EDTA, um, we have it all throughout uh, the tube, as you see here. Again, um, with all of these tubes, any of them that have a gel separator or anticoagulant, you want to make sure that you are um, inverting them gently uh, immediately after you draw the specimen in order to make sure there is a complete and equal distribution of the anticoagulant or um, gel or whatever the additive is throughout the blood because it's in there for a reason. So speaking of reasons, um, like we just said, with the lavender top, also known as the EDTA tube, you have the anticoagulant in there that is going to pull out the calcium. Again, it's an anticoagulant, so it wants to stop the blood from clotting, and the perfect way to do that is pull out the calcium. It also preserves the cellular morphology, uh, hence why we would use it for a CBC, a complete blood count, um, because if the CBC is all crazy, then we do a smear review and we want to see beautiful cells. We don't want uh, an in vitro uh, issue to happen um, to cause us to think that, uh, you know, something weird is happening in vivo, which means in the patient. Um, so we're preserving the cellular morphology and we're going to inhibit any platelet clumping using that EDTA. Okay, like I said before, this one is a bullet. If you can see in the middle, see the bottom of the little tube inside. These are usually used for babies, okay, and, um, you know, babies need... Uh, CBC, uh, depending on what's going on with them too. You might find them coming down from the NICU and uh, be very, very uh, careful and don't, don't constantly cancel baby specimens because they are highly affected by how much volume is taking out of them and it could hurt them um, fatally. So you want to make sure to do as much as you possibly can off of any bullets that come down, whether they're a chemistry or an EDTA, because that baby um, is needing those results and is highly affected by the loss of blood. Okay. Um, so then this one is your gray top tube and it's a sodium fluoride tube. Uh, it can also be um, potassium oxalate. Um, but what happens in this one is that you're trying to stop glycolysis from happening. Woohoo! Um, sorry, I forgot to say, <laughs> I know I'm backtracking. You don't, um, you don't centrifuge these unless it's for blood banking or the factor five Leiden. Okay, moving on. Sorry. 
Um, you would centrifuge this one. Uh, this one is used for a fasting glucose and uh, the sodium fluoride prevents glycolysis and inhibits bacterial growth while potassium oxalate is going to um, uh, precipitate calcium and it's going to give uh, plasma for the, um, the glucose level. Okay, so in this, you... You know, you have a difference between this result versus a random glucose result. In your CMP and your BMP, those are considered random glucose results. Um, your uh, green top tube is considered fasting. If the patient is not listed as being a uh, fasting draw, then uh, this is not going to be accurate. Okay. And uh, that's basically it. This tube is not a blood tube. <laughs> this is a urine tube, so please make sure that you notice that. Um, it uh, does have a little bit of a preservative in here, but most of them um, do not and do not have a preservative that's going to affect your chemistries of the urine. Um, there are the little gray top, little tiny tubes with the little plug in the top, like this plug, except it's gray, and it's a really tiny tube. That has boric acid in it, and uh, you don't want to ever use that for your chemistry, um, uh, your analysis. And if you do, then uh, you can't result those um, those results because they're not going to be accurate. But anytime you get a urine that comes down to you and it does have a microbiology culture on it as well, you need to send the tube first to micro. If you really need to get that urine done, then pour off the, um, pour off the uh, specimen as much as you need, keeping uh, some in here as well into a graduated conical vial. Uh, this is for your analysis, but you need to have it labeled. Make sure it's labeled with the patient's information. You need to have at least 10 to 12 um, milliliters in there. If not, you know, you can follow your, um, your laboratory's guidelines. But um, so you're preserving the cultural integrity of this tube if you recap it with the same uh, plug and you just pour off into this. Do not send this tube to micro. They're going to be very upset with you and they can't really do anything with it. Um, but they can do their, um, their culturing from here and they're probably going to keep it, okay, and keep it in their refrigerator. So this way you have uh, your specimen, you can get it done, they can get theirs done, and uh, everyone can have the, uh, the clinician can have the, the laboratory results as soon as possible. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please subscribe and uh, catch me in another video. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.